taking to the street for easy shows in some of the coolest music venues. I got a great one for you. <laughs> Complicated. You know what I mean? No self involved. That's not what I do. That's really depressing. Yeah. Quiet. Yeah. 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 Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome to the show. It is Music Week, night number two. I'm Carson Daly, obviously here at my radio studio, 97.1 F Radio. I don't own the station. Uh, I do from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. here every morning. I'm around tons of music and I love it. This week we'll be talking a lot about music. So uh, let's get into the spotlight. <laughs> and that, my friends, is David Guetta, a really nice guy. Uh, and he, right now, Hit Machine. That's what he is. Speaking of Hit Machine, we found this company that does something pretty amazing. They have what I think is a Hit Machine. They've created a program that can basically predict whether or not a song is going to be a hit, and record companies are buying into it. It's the guys from Music Intelligence Solutions, and we caught up with their CEO, David Meredith. Take a look. If you want to have a, a hit song, start by making great music. My name is David Meredith. I'm CEO at Music Intelligence Solutions, which is the creator of Uplaya.com. Uplaya is an online service to help artists get discovered. So the artists will go to the website, they'll upload their song, and within a matter of minutes, they'll get their hit song science report back. Don't stop making pop DJ we look at rhythm, pitch, melody, harmony, chord progression. We then compare it to millions and millions of songs across all languages and all genres globally. And the songs that have been successful have certain underlying patterns that are consistent. We analyze David Guetta's song, Sexy Bitch. That's a song that was very well structured in terms of a song that would have potential for commercial success. Here we come, here we go. Black Eyed Peas, I've got a feeling, um, scored even higher with Hits on Science. When we analyze the Lady Gaga song, it scored extremely high. But then you also put that together with brilliant marketing, and you end up with, you know, with really good numbers. We took the performance data, what songs were successful. We expected them to be spread evenly across the music universe, but we were really surprised to see that there were actually songs that were forming constellations and positioned close to each other in the music universe. When we analyze music, the underlying patterns can be similar, but the songs can sound completely different or even be in different genres. A lot of Elton John's hit songs were similar to what are in popular church hymns. And Dee Snyder sang his seminal song, We're Not Gonna Take It for Twisted Sister, also used choral progressions from church hymns as well. Now, having algorithms that help us understand art does not demean art, it actually enhances it. And really what we're doing is providing a better understanding of you know, what makes up that music and why do I love it. That's some pretty mind-blowing stuff. You can go to youplaya.com for more. We'll take a break. When we get back, we're going to do from the El Rey Theater, RJD2. Our spotlight tonight is on Nathan Rabin and much more as music week continues.